Hey guys, Blazin here. So, it's actually been a while since I've done dedicated Halo news. I, I feel like I haven't done one of these since like my early, <laughs> like my early videos on YouTube. And, you know, me saying that, some stuff has been happening, you know, around Revolving Halo lately. Uh, so I thought, you know, I'd round up some of the news and just give some of my thoughts on it. I have a list of bullet points here, so let's get straight to it. So the first thing I want to talk about is Halo Infinite's Firefight, which came with the mid-season uh, update. Now, I already did my uh, take on the repair field. I already did an analysis on that, so if you want to see that, just, you know, go check it out. Uh, but Firefight itself, I've actually been having a lot of fun with it, surprisingly. I wasn't expecting to have a uh, like, I'm having a lot more fun than I thought I would. So, as of right now with Halo Infinite, Firefight's been mostly the only thing I've been, you know, dabbing into. You know, it, it's given me a reason to play Halo Infinite again. Along with Firefight came with the new networking, which from my experience so far has been mostly positive. I'll get into the networking a little more, but first, the Firefight. Uh, but yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with Firefight, I, the King of the Hill. It's like, you know, you're playing King of the Hill against the AI. Normal difficulty was honestly boring to me, but that's just because maybe I'm th I'm the type of person that maybe wants a bit of a challenge. So if you just want to really like just chill out, uh, normal is the the mode to go for. But if you're maybe someone like me that's looking for a bit of a challenge, uh, heroic is pretty like it's a nice balance. It's not too it's not too difficult, but it's also not too brain dead either. Because I remember I only play like normal once and. That shit was so easy that I didn't have to use the repair field, for example. Like, the repair field is almost like, you know, you don't need it to absolutely get through normal difficulty with uh, heroic firefight. Or, uh, normal firefight. Versus heroic, which is the the one I play the most, yeah, the repair field can, can really help out in heroic firefight. It's also cool that the, the House of Reckoning, like a campaign level, is, uh, I believe it's forgeable? I haven't checked out uh, Forge, especially with the new scriptable AI, which I haven't checked out either. But it's cool to play on a campaign setting. But I guess my point about House of Reckoning is that it's nice to play on, on a campaign level, on top of the multiplayer levels. It's also possible this Firefight, it, like, it's possible this could be the best iteration of Firefight. Just because of the fact that not only is the mode customizable, but, you know, the AI is also customizable. Especially uh, now, um, I haven't, you know, I haven't looked up anything in the custom game browser or the, uh, the file share or whatever. But I'm sure people are making custom campaigns uh, by now. Or like custom firefight or campaign scenarios. But yeah, overall, firefight, I'm having a ton of fun. And that's mainly the only thing that's keeping me uh, coming back to Halo Infinite right now. Uh, next thing to talk about is the new networking. So far from my experience, especially now that it's been added to the squad battle playlist, which is also another thing that's kind of, you know, something PvP related for me to play. Uh, the new networking so far has been pretty smooth, I think is the word I'd use. I've only had maybe like a, a few sniper shots sometimes just not registering. And maybe just a couple vehicle jitters, but for the most part the networking overhaul has been uh, smooth uh, from my experience. I know there's still uh, a few kinks to work out. I actually recommend you watching Mint Blitz's video on it. I'll leave his video down in the description. He does a really good job at documenting uh, the potential problems, or maybe even some current problems right now, that are present within the new uh, networking. Like with the new networking, aiming and moving around does feel uh, different on my end. Different in a good way. Like I said, I think the, the word I use to describe it is smooth. Uh, talking more about squad battle and PvP, so far I've been testing out the sidekick. I haven't really picked up any other weapons like the BR or Commando or whatever, just because those weapons are just easy to use, and that's not really going to tell me how good the networking is. So I wanted to try, you know, the sidekick, which that gun has bloom, and sometimes it's just the RNG is not in your favor. But the sidekick lately in squad battle has been more consistent than I thought it would. As of recording this commentary, I have not tried the assault rifle yet. Because if the sidekick is feeling consistent on my end, I wonder what the assault rifle feels like. Will it be? I wonder if it's even more ridiculous. But anyways, that's pretty much my thoughts on Firefight and 
the overall like networking experience. Overall, it's been uh, a positive experience on my end. Some other future news that probably didn't get much out there is apparently 343 is working on a match composer similar to MCC, which I remember that was being requested around the beginning of the game, I think. Probably not as high up on the list, but I remember some people mentioning it back when this game had, you know, the playlist for this game was bare bones as fuck. But uh, yeah, it's nice to know that a, a match composer is coming to this game. Cool. Now let's talk about the few biggest pieces of news that I've heard about revolving Halo. Starting with Halo 7, I guess. Uh, apparently there was an interview with Sketch, and then he was talking about, like, the, the next Halo game. Or like at least at least uh, like admitting like yeah there's a there's another Halo game in existence, and that got me thinking like does that uh, like does this new Halo game have anything to do with the if you guys remember the Halo the Endless patent thing that was like rumored a lot like a, a year or two ago, and also the amount of job listings that you know people keep finding, and he sketching the interview even you know acknowledges like yeah we've been posting. Uh, job listings for uh, for 343. Folks that have been kind of keeping a keen eye might notice that we've started sort of posting some job job postings again. Um, I mean, the, the the winds are blowing. We are starting to, to look ahead to the future. Um, I don't think we have anything to say on that front for quite a while, but, you know, I mean, Infinite, as good as it is, and as more great things there are still to come, um, the studio has ambitions that, that reach beyond Infinite, and I'm very, very excited and energized to sort of take all the cumulative 25 years and all the learnings from Infinite and, and apply that to what could be next. What is it? That stench. I've smelled it before. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much a confirmation of, yeah, there's a new Halo game that they're making. There was maybe only two things he said that like, you know, made me question or like that, you know, that maybe like, like, I don't, I don't believe him. Uh, the first thing he said was, you know, something like the the best days of Halo are not behind us. I'm just privileged and thankful that I've somehow had a small role to be a part of that journey. And as I look further ahead, um, I definitely don't think Halo's best years are behind us. I think there are a lot of really cool, exciting things on the horizon. Some, some things are further out. And I was like, okay, Sketch. <laughs> I love Sketch, but I, I don't believe that. It's going to take a lot more than just telling me that the best days are not behind us. because. As far as I'm aware, yeah, the best days are behind us. The best days of Halo have been behind us for years. Like, I'm at a point where it's just like, I need Halo 7 in my hands to believe you. The next thing he said, and this is the, like, hard negative thing where we're just like, oh, fuck, no, I don't believe you. <laughs> where, where he said, uh, oh, we, we've learned from our, you know, we've learned from our mistakes from Halo Infinite. We'll do better next time, basically. And when I heard that, I was like, nope. No, I 117% don't believe you. Even if you're enjoying Halo Infinite right now, you can't deny that they have said that so many times in previous Halo games. Oh yeah, we've we've learned from our mistakes from Halo 4. Uh, yeah, we've learned from our mistakes from Halo 5. And now, you know, even though it's coming from Sketch, it's the you know it's the same thing again. Oh, we've learned from our mistakes from Halo Infinite. Even Bonnie Ross, which she said, you know, even though I know she's gone from the company or whatever, but I'm still going to point it out, where. I think it was 2017, with MCC at least, where she's like, oh, uh, we're going to have split screen in going forward uh, for future Halo games. Um, and I would say, for any FPS going out forward, we will always have split screen in going forward. And, uh, yeah, it's safe to say that that, that promise was, uh, was fucked. And I know some of you guys are probably going to tell me, but, but, but Blazing, Fortress 4 got new leadership. Uh, everything's going to be fine. Uh, please uh, have some hopium. Uh, it, Halo Infinite is getting better. Yeah, you're right. Halo Infinite is getting better, but it shouldn't have to get better, you know? Like, it should have already been good from the start. Like, when are you gonna tell yourselves that, like, enough is enough, you know? Like, for Halo 4, my excuse was, oh, three, four, it's 343's first Halo game. I'll let it go. Even though I almost nearly quit even Halo 4. And with Halo 5, I stuck around just because, well, I, I genuinely enjoyed the game, but clearly, like, there was a divide because, you know, Halo 5 was uh, a very different game, to say the least. So not everyone, you know, was on the same page, and I, I saw that. And I acknowledged that uh, with Halo 5, I acknowledged, like, oh, all right, there, there's, a, there's a problem here. If we're all not enjoying the same Halo game, 
and we're split between MCC and Halo 5 during the time, then there's a problem. Like, the same thing was going on with Halo Infinite during, like, its first year. Like, remember? Like, MCC? Like, at some points during, like, like the early life with Halo Infinite, like, MCC was sometimes, like, like had a higher population than Infinite sometimes. Like, they were fighting back and forth. But, of course, now, uh, since uh, Infinite's getting better with the updates and whatnot, now, you know, Infinite's, you know, taking the lead. Now, I will give credit to what credit is due. You know, I commend 343 for actually sticking with Infinite and, you know, being dedicated to improving the game. So, I'll give them credit there. Even though I'm already, you know, I'm ready to throw in the towel and, you know, just give me the next Halo game. But, again, I commend 343 for actually sticking with this game and actually trying to fix it. So, yeah, 343 has my respect on that front. I mean, they are fixing the networking, which is... I, I didn't even think it was possible. That, sound like, that sounds like an impossible task for 343, but hey, they're, they're fucking doing it, so... Yeah, uh, that's cool. I feel like the, the, next big, uh, the next biggest thing, if they, they can try to adjust, is the skill-based matchmaking. If they can fix that, and, or like, you know, adjust it or whatever, along with the network thing, then holy shit, they, they might, you know, I might be playing Infinite even more. Speaking of MCC, uh, I guess we can move on to the MCC uh, topic that's been going around. And that's the fact that I think MCC support is is, uh, is dead now, because I think employees were given a plaque or whatever saying like, good job with MCC, uh, the fight is finished or some shit, which, uh, MCC still has some issues. Like, I think there's still like, a lot of issues to tackle. Like, I know a lot of the other bigger channels are pointing out the mod support and whatnot, but I'm gonna point out stuff that's probably not a lot of people know about, and they're all gameplay related. You know, obviously, for those of you that watch my Halo Reach Weapon analysis, um, I'm going to tell you now that some of these statistics uh, on, I think, mainly the, sem the semi-automatic weapons, uh, I tried to get those stats from the original 360, because as of right now with the MCC, uh, a lot of these semi-automatics uh, are not one-to-one -one with the OG 360. For example, I'll point this out now for those of you that don't know, uh, Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2, their hit registrations are not one-to-one -one with Xbox. So I, that's probably the biggest one. I hope maybe they can fix their hit registrations someday like they did with Halo 3 because Halo 3 is buttery smooth on MCC. So if they could fix, you know, if they could fix Halo 3, I don't know if they could fix Halo CE and Halo 2 and have have their hit registrations fixed. Even though Halo 3's gameplay is buttery smooth on MCC, I will say from my experience, uh, the the only weapon that stands out to me that might have a problem or like inconsistent is like the gravity hammer in Halo 3. I think because sometimes I lunge and it's like I get meleeed in between or like it's not always consistent. I also want to mention I, I do experience ghost melee sometimes in Halo 3 and Reach. Like, uh, maybe a little bit more often than than I really should be. And for Halo Reach and Halo 4, um, for Halo Reach, I know the DMR, the Needler, and Magnum, like, the semi-automatics for the most part, they're firing uh, slightly faster than they should be. Like, they are not one to one to, th to 360. Th those guns are firing a little bit faster than they should be. And same thing with Halo 4, I think uh, I know the battle rifle for sure. I don't know about the DMR or carbine, but I know the battle rifle for sure is still firing a little too fast than the original 360. So I don't know if how easy or hard that is to fix. Those are the gameplay related changes that I noticed while playing multiplayer. While the bigger channels are pointing out the mod stuff, I, I want to point out the, the core gameplay stuff because that's the gameplay. I think it's important. And who knows, maybe if Halo C and Halo 2 ever if they ever get their hit registrations fixed, maybe some opinions might swing on in terms of like their weapon balancing. But yeah, those are those are my sort of requests. I wish MCC got fixed, and also there might be still be like some lingering campaign issues. They probably haven't been tackled. Like that's what I want to focus on on MCC. I'm more into like the fixes and one to ones. Like I'm, I mean, more mod support's not bad at all. But since the 360 server shut down, MCC's basically just become the only place to play the classic games so for me it's important to have those classic games as one-to-one -one as possible oh i just got i just remembered uh i think reach's lighting is a little fucked 
Uh, I think it's like the glare effect might be a little bit too much or too shiny in certain areas. Uh, that, that's one visual uh, bug I noticed while, while uh, playing Reach. I think we were also supposed to get customizable armor for the Halo Reach Elites, like individual pieces, and that never happened. That would have been fucking cool, I wish we got that. Fuck. As far as monetization goes, you know, I know 343 was suggesting the whole uh, purchasable uh, Spartan point thing. You know, at the time I, w I was, you know, denying it, like, fuck no, we there shouldn't be uh, MTs for MCC, but, you know, if, if it needs financial support, then fuck it. it uh, make Spartan points uh, purchasable. And also modded servers would be nice, or like purchasable servers. I know uh, a lot of people were suggesting that. Yeah, I, I would be uh, on board with that too. Purchasable servers for like $10 or something. But I think that's enough of MCC. I hope it doesn't fucking die. And now we move on to the weird news. Um, so this came, this piece of news came out a little later, but apparently there was a survey that was going out, and 343 was suggesting putting uh, all the Halo games in Infinite, with and with all the classic like feelings of the older respective games, like Halo CE 2, 3, and I think Reach. Uh, when I saw that, or when I, I was like, what? <laughs> like, 343, are you crazy? Like, how would that even work? That sounds crazy. Like, would the weapons even feel the same? Would the games even feel the same? Like, are we talking about putting the games literally within Infinite? Or are we talking just remakes within Infinite? Like, I, I don't completely understand. I'm not sure if I really have an opinion on that topic, because it's just like, I don't know what 343 is exactly talking about. Like, what do you mean? Like, are you talking about Infinite remakes? Or are you talking about, like... Literally putting the games in infinite, and if you do that, how would it work? Would it even function? <laughs> and I guess the last piece of Halo news that I'll just briefly talk about is the Halo TV show season two. Uh, yeah, fuck that shit. I will admit the trailer they showed looked good, but I'm not gonna let the trailer fool me. That pretty much wraps up all the Halo news up to this point. Um, I know 343 just launched Winter Contingency three. And, uh, so far, from what I've heard, and from what I've... Well, yeah, from what I've heard, 343 didn't really end the year really strong. Uh, they just released one snow map, Legendary Firefight, which is cool, and no special playlist to come with it. Uh, the Battle Pass is cool. There, there's some cosmetics in the Battle Pass that I, I think is really cool. But, uh, yeah, those are my thoughts on the Winter Contingency 3. It's just, you know, it's just whatever. Like... It's not gonna make me play the game. Like, oh my god, I need the shit in the battle pass right now. Like, eh, 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 eh I'm, I'm good. It's funny because I remember back in Halo 5, whenever, like, Christmas came around, I remember 343 making a playlist of the, like, plasma grenades only, and have the plasma grenades act as snowballs. Uh, I remember that shit. And then 343 snowed up all their dev maps, not just live fire like they did with Halo Infinite, so... What a, what a downgrade compared to what they did with Halo 5. What they did here with Winter Contingency 3 is literally like Season 1 of Halo Infinite Weak Sauce. But uh, alright, I think that should be everything. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed my ramble. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Uh, share the video around. Subscribe if you want to stick around. And uh, until next time, peace.